Welcome to the Occult Rejects. We are two former secret society members who are determined to show the public the truth that occultism has been purposely integrated into every aspect of society, from politics to music, Hollywood and science. This is used to manipulate the public as a whole and to protect the fake elite. The symbols are used all around us to affect world events and public perception, our behavior, and even our future. We will translate the occult so that you have eyes to see. We reject their agenda to give you the tools to save yourself. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Occult Rejects with your hosts Lux. And the NY Patriot. And uh, I wanted, before we start the show, I did want to uh, add that uh, for one, my boy Lux over here, he has his own podcast. Uh, would you like Shit, to tell yes. everybody? Would you like to tell everybody your podcast and where they can find it? And it will be in the show notes going forward. Yeah, so we're going to be uh, I'm starting my own podcast, having some great guests on. Also, going to be you know making my own content, sort of about occult principles and things that can help people better their lives. That just kind of break down some. You know, people always ask for well. You know, all this crazy stuff going on, what what can I do? And that answer is to, you know, start to work on yourself first. So just going to try and explain the occult in an easy way that is really uh, applicable to people's lives. And okay. uh, have fun, do some, you know, cool projects. And uh, really looking forward to it. But you'll be able to find it at uh, the Lux Rising podcast. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, that's why I've even been telling people... Uh you know, d don't think that going to his show is going to be like, oh, it's just going to be like another NY Patriot. No, it's going to be two totally different shows, and I'm sure my man will be uh, dropping jewels over on his end. So please, <laughs> go check it out. Show him some love. Subscribe. Um, another new thing that we did is that we do have a uh, YouTube up again. Um, not everything that we do may go there because, you know, we, we know that they like to censor, but... It's a platform for people to find us than to hopefully go to another means to listen to us. But uh, there will be the Occult Rejects, there will be my show, and there will be Lux's podcast all uh, going to this one account. So uh, the link for that is in the bottom. Um, now the other whole thing is, uh, you know, we've been having problems with Spotify um, the last couple of weeks. Prior to this, uh, I guess reality TV, maybe we call it Lux. <laughs> this fucking yeah, really. Soap opera, in my opinion. I, I mean, I hate to sound like you know that person where everything's fucking fake, but I just really feel like this is just like here we're gonna present the reason why we're doing this. We were just gonna do it regardless anyway, but whatever. Um, we've had problems with Spotify releasing our shit and now my stuff prior to that crap. Um, and it's still happening now to where I have to resubmit to Spotify multiple times to get the episode to drop. Um, that's going to become a problem eventually because uh, it's just going to be annoying. And I don't think me and Lux are going to want to have to keep on doing it. So there's going to be a few things that can happen. One, um, I'm just Spotify won't have our stuff and then you're going to have to switch. Um, two, we might try to... Uh, Maybe move it from somewhere else and see if that podcasting host will, uh, when they go to publish it, sometimes it goes through easier when it's being published from somewhere else. Or uh, three, which we want to do anyway, uh, a site. At least a site so then we know that we can put our stuff up there. Lux can put his stuff up there. I could put some of my stuff up there. Uh, you know, even have stuff where, you know, depending on how the site's set up, maybe, you know, even fans, like a, somewhere they could post their shit, you know, threads and whatever. Uh, we would like to work on something like that to where we know that we're safe, that if our stuff does come down, um, we know that we have that as a backup and people know that they can go there. Because, like, Lux even texted text me this morning. He's like, I don't even know, like, where this could be a year from now, Right. Right. I mean, if it's going to be this way now, that's just them getting started. This is just the test bed, you know? Yes. On so, a large scale. 
Yes, exactly. So uh, the, the thing is, if uh, any of our fans out there happen to, uh, you know, do this stuff, you know how to uh, make sites. That's your thing. Uh, maybe uh, you, that's your regular job and you're looking for a side hustle to make some extra cash. Uh, please hit us up if you uh, really know how to do that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And uh, maybe we could work something out, save us a little bit of money, and uh, we get to pay a fan instead of uh, some company. Uh, so, yeah, please, you can get in touch with any of us. You can find me on Instagram. You can find us on the Occult Rejects on Twitter. You can find Lux, the Occult Rejects on Twitter. Um, there is an Occult Rejects on Instagram now, too. That's kind of half run by a fan. I wouldn't suggest really hitting us up there to try to get in touch with us. But, I mean, I guess if it was an emergency. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I guess you can, and the fan might let us know. But, really, uh, the p sending us messages there is pointless. Um, but, yeah, we have all those ways you can get in touch with us. Our Discord, however, you know, we have plenty of ways. Email, reach out to us, let us know, and uh, maybe we can work something out. It's just that uh, there's obviously issues with censorship. We've been experiencing it before the soap opera. And uh, we just want to make sure that our message uh, is still available, regardless uh, what goes down or where we have to move to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. That and uh, like I said, please uh, go check out the, uh, the you know it's called Tour and More actually because it will be the Occult Rejects. It will be uh, it will be Lux Rising, and it will also be uh, my show all together. And like I said, it may not have. Every episode, but, you know, we'll put up what we think uh, we can get away with. And, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just Absolutely. it's just really, because you know what was crazy and was really fucked up is that, you know, well, before my YouTube went down, and I, and I really, I honestly, I fucked that up myself because I kept pushing an episode that they already told me, like the Ninth Gate. I had like half the movie in the fucking episode with Sean. I knew I couldn't push that shit off. But I tried like fucking like an asshole three fucking times in a day. And they're like, yo, fuck you. You're done now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like I, I kind of like deserved that. But, uh, you know, I, these these will be just episodes sent from Spreaker. So it's just going to be a thumbnail in the audio. Uh, I think for the most part, we'll be able to post most of our stuff on there. It's just, you know, um, the sad thing is, is though, like what I was saying is that that actually was getting the most views for me when it came to video. Probably Rumble and BitChute put together. So, like, yeah. I had a lot of people actually probably just listening because I really didn't have much video until that one point when I was really pushing it to try to push it through. So, uh, it was just like, fuck, you know, I actually lost a lot of subscribers that, like, really listened to the shit. So um, I think it's a good outlet that we're going to try again to at least get our names out there. People could find us and, uh, you know, move on maybe to Bit Shooter Rumble, our podcast. But um, for the most part, I, I think we'll be able to get away with dropping most of our good stuff on there. Right. right. So uh, that's enough about uh, trying to boost our show. <laughs> and uh, and uh, here's some shout outs. And then I'm going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> we got uh, Austin. We got a uh, big uh, shitster. We got Maywood. Uh, we got Amit, and we got Rev from Blue House. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Conspiracy Kyle as well and Big God. Uh, thank you all. Uh, comments, retweets, uh, messages, and just uh, you know basic support. Uh, thank you. We see what you do. You don't go unnoticed, and uh, that's why I'm giving you that shout out. And today we are have the special, special privilege of having an actor, comedian, writer, director, destroyer of cancer, <laughs> appeared in over 35 films, 20 shows. Today we have the legendary Tommy Chong on with us. Thank you. Thank you. That was very nice. No, thank you for coming nice. on. Believe me. <laughs> It's uh, yeah, well, it's it's, it's nice wild. To be here. It's wild to know that I'm like actually talking to somebody that when I grew up I was watching their movies. You know, like it's just it's just mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we started with the records, and and we realized that we were the first voice in a lot of people's ear. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? I remember that. Believe it or not, before I even came across your shows, I remember my dad playing records of you guys. Sure. So, like, that was actually how I first ever came across, was just from the record player, yeah. not even from the yeah. movies. 
the, they used to use our our tapes or records almost like a, a, to keep kids quiet in the ride to school, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I remember it. It shut me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just put on Cheech and Chong, and, and, and by the time, you know, then they're all of a sudden they're there. Uh, yeah, and a lot of kids, you know, they, they learned the, the life secrets through uh, Cheech and Chong. <laughs> that's so funny. That's so funny. Yeah, cool. yeah. Well, in fact, one time I was on a show, and and the guy he started out with, how does it feel to be the guy that turned over thirty million people onto drugs? <laughs> <laughs> and I at the time uh, we both teach and I both said we're pretty proud. I think it's more though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're giving us as much credit as you should. Be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that really is true. I mean, you guys almost, I mean, there were a bunch of other voices sort of around at that time, but you guys changed the entire culture. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, we, we influenced the people that, you know, went out and did their own stoner stuff, you know. Yeah, we we, we were the first. We, we influenced you. Well, Lenny, Lenny Bruce really was the first. And then uh, Richard Pryor touched. You know, and all the comedians touched on a little bit, but it wasn't until uh, till Cheech and Chong appeared on the scene that there was there was no doubt about what we were saying. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, it's funny and, because because of your influence. For all I know, the reason I'm smoking weed legally in New York could be partially yeah. because of, partially because of you. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know if you. I mean, not not trying to you know make a bigger deal out of it is, but that really could have leaded us to where I am now, smoking it legally in New York. Well, you you you, you get to talking about the spirituality. It was the weed or the cannabis to uh, that started that in, influenced uh, the the Holy Bible. You know, as we know it, the King James. You know. Old Testament, New Testament, you know, there's, uh, there, uh, what do you call it, uh, mentioned, weed is mentioned in the Bible many, many, many times. It was called canna, and it really was, I do a joke about it, but it really was the burning bush that, that talked to Moses, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was done in a very poetic way, but I mean, you know. At the end of the day, you know, Moses uh, got high and thought of all that shit. You know? <laughs> Especially if it was a whole entire bush, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, back then, you know, uh, you know, well, it was it was a gift from God. So, so it was not only uh, you know the big, the biggest ever, but it was eternal. You know, I mean, it, it was, uh, and and the thing is, what. You know, in my study, especially with the weed, the weed opens a mind. You know, the, the weed opens a heart, opens a mind, and it calms the mind. And that's why it was so good medically, uh, because, uh, you know, you can't get healed if you're worried. Because once mm. you, your mind starts worrying, then you go into that fight or flight thing with your body. It's like some pulled the alarm, you know, and all of a sudden all the, your organs go on alert, you know, including your, your, uh, immune system. And so when you, uh, calm the mind, like, like we does with me, I, I get very spiritual thoughts immediately, you know, and, uh, to the point where I can't remember really what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's why so I got notepads all over the house. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, well, with me, I used to say that's why I have a bong in every room in my house, you know, because because weed will give you a great idea, and then by the time you get to where you got to pick up whatever it is to make that idea work, usually your phone. <laughs> you forget you forget why you're in the room, you know. So so that's good. That's good because what's happening. When your mind isn't engaged in in some sort of like all hands on deck or alert, alert, uh, then the, your immune system, which really is a defense, uh, the part of your body, you know, it recognizes the enemy, and and but more important to me is the fact is, is the cannabis, because not only it calms your mind, it 
it, it, it gets you in the creative mode. Yes, yeah. yeah. And, it, and, and, and the Bible says, you know, if you keep your mind on God, he will perfect that which concerns you. Mm. Now, think about that one. That's word. deep. Yeah, so if you're, if you're an artist, if you're a writer, if whatever, if your mind is on God, which is on really on the infinite, mm. then it's open. And then you connect it with God. I tell people all the time, we all have a God app. Every, every living thing, creature, substance, everything living has a God app. Yes. And, and all you have to do with humans to, to activate that app is to think about God. That's all. And I tell people now that if you, want to, if you can control your thoughts, you can be so successful, <laughs> it'll blow your mind at mm. whatever you're doing, yeah. including being a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, know you mentioned something before, and I wanted to ask your opinion on it, because it's, it's how I feel. It's just how it works for me. Um, with smoking weed, regardless if I'm smoking weed or even just doing my meditation or whatever you know, occult practices I might have for myself to clear my mind. Um, I do feel that, you know, and the weed does the same thing when I smoke. It's as almost as if um, all that bullshit that's in my head that doesn't need to be in there finally kind of shuts the fuck up for once. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. You know, and, leaves, well, you, and then I can yeah, finally what hear. Done, what you've done is, is you've tuned in. Yes, I've tuned out to it, tune in. <laughs> yeah, you, you tuned out, and, and a lot of times what you're getting is a lot, when your mind isn't totally fixed on God, you're getting static because yes. you've got all these other thoughts that want to want to uh, concern themselves with you. That's yes, you know? yes, yes, and that's, that's what right. I was getting and, at. And, and, yeah. yeah, the silence, and, and that's why that that's why the uh, the um, commandment "judge not" I think is one of the most important commandments there are because. Judge not means, uh, and I think what it also means is think not. <laughs> you know, if someone says something stupid, don't even think about it. Don't even don't even go there. Don't even acknowledge it. Yeah. You know, and that way you're controlling your thoughts because you, you didn't take the bait. Because usually when <laughs> people, it's like fishing. You know, you didn't you take you the throw fish the hook. bait out there, so, so you throw some stupid you know, theory or some, uh, you know, uh, criticism or something s said that activates you right away. You know, want, want, you know, you want to get angry. You want to argue. You want to do it. But if, but if you ignore that shit <laughs> and, and uh, just keep your mind on God, then, then that smile, you know, just sort of disintegrates everything. You know, just yeah. clears the way for everything. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, yeah, when when you were saying that about you know, like guess kind of like the silence. I feel like that when, um, you know, when it removes all that stuff and you have all that silence going on. Finally, that is when you can actually tune in and maybe hear God talk to you. You know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And and what for you sure. said and what you said is true. When when you're able to do that and you're able to listen to to what God's telling you and you're starting to find out who you are. You will be a very successful person because you will realize that you learned what you love, and you do it because you love it. Yeah. and that makes a and successful like say, person. It, it, <laughs> yeah, it's not all always good either. No, oh, no, 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 no. You can definitely be a scumbag. You can definitely be a scumbag, of course. A successful criminal. Yeah. yeah. A successful murderer. A successful. You, you know, he will perfect that which concerns you. Yes. And the reason I can do that, th say that, is because if you search further. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because you asked me, because the show is about spirituality. But normally, I shut the fuck up because, you know, silence is, is golden. And, and unless someone asks you uh, directions to Disneyland, don't give it. Just because you know the directions, you know. <laughs> right. The person may not understand the directions that you're telling them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Well, and too, like you were saying, it's being able to, to tune in and get into that 
meditative state, you know, that has such physical effects on the body, even the rhythm of your heart, you know, and, and just physiological effects that, that that meditative state has on you. It's so, it's so interesting because you just, I see today, everyone's really kind of afraid of a lot of different things all at once, you know, I'm kind of... It, judge just, not. Exactly. Judge not. So yeah. everyone's, Listen, judge not, even that. Judge not. Everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. See, and what you're supposed to be doing is improving you, yourself. And you can't improve yourself if you have a comparison, e- either better or worse. The only way you can improve yourself is to be totally honest with yourself and know exactly yeah. what needs to be improved. Because so many people... I don't have it. I do it all the time. Oh, of course. They compare my experiences. Well, at least it's not as bad as so-and-so, you know. We have no idea how so-and-so, if it's bad or good or whatever. You, you have no idea. Yeah. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, when I first got to L.A., uh, the only reason I moved to L.A. was the beach because I was a bodybuilder, and I wanted to work out at Gold's, and I wanted to lay on Venice Beach. And that was, and, and I wanted to write songs. And so I ended up on the beach. I'm from Calgary. And Calgary, Alberta, we're nowhere, 200 miles away from a lake, you know. So the beach was very important to me. Now, the beach, and then, you know, go swimming. And so I, I'm in the, playing in the water, swimming, and I see this guy, and he's bobbing up and down with his head in the water. And I swear to God, it looked like he was drowned or something you know so i swim over to him and i grab him like to save him and the guy looks up and he goes what are you doing (laughs) and i realized then he wasn't drowning he he was just that was his way of enjoying the water (laughs) 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 and so here's here's this this guy grabbing him (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and pulling him, I mean, you know. And the other day, uh, I, I saw in the paper this homeless guy is sleeping on the ground, and and this good Samaritan comes over and covers him up with a blanket, and the and the homeless guy gets up and beats the shit out of the good Samaritan because <laughs> <laughs> wow. he thought he was being robbed or something. <laughs> I don't know. You see, you, you, what I learned. That's what I'm saying. The secret lies within. And it's the secret to everything, you know. Think, that's what I mean. Your thoughts are so important. Oh, and we yeah. do this automatically. Like, you know, we, we say, it, I hear it on the news all the time, you know. Uh, well, 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 like they're doing now, uh, you know, the news. The news keeps you watching because you're trying to scare the shit out of you. <laughs> right. That's, that's what I mean, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, no. oh, 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 just a minute. Don't, don't, don't go in there. And you said, why? Well, oh, oh, okay, we'll be right back after uh, this message. <laughs> and, and, and you're stuck. You can't go nowhere. You're waiting, you know. Uh, and, and they always say, like a cliffhanger. I mean, I'm laughing. It was something you said before about um, judging. You know, and uh, you oh, know, no, no, that, that, and, and that comparing. is the number one. That's the number one. Number one. Think about it. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody, everybody judges themselves, either rightly or wrongly. You know, it's 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 beautiful theater. Yes, and that's and, it's, uh, it's a it's a theater. That's exactly what it is, right? Yep. Mitch. Yes, and, and you know and, what I'm saying. And, and what I wanted to add to that, and I think. Um, well, I think, for one, I think Lux can agree on one of them. When we first started our show, there was just certain things that I think we censored ourselves on. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mm-hmm. think we were as happy as we were with the show. And eventually, you know what? Said, screw it. We're going to be our authentic selves. We're not going to compare ourselves to another show that does better. We're just going to be who we are. And I think that uh, that changed and that made the show what it is today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, you got a hold of me. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it's You're even me on this show. It's even to the point. See, to that's where... that's a, that's a sign of evolving. Yeah, you're evolving. You know, and because I, I'm 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 the best way to, to see how far you've advanced. Yeah. Right. You know, because there's there's a lot of shows. Well, Joe Rogan won't won't. 
I've been on his show twice, but the last show he won't publish. He won't. Uh, it's not available. I asked for it, and and someone that had it, you know, found it and gave it to me, because because I went I went on my hey shut up. It's my <laughs> it's my watchdog here. I I went on my my usual rant with Joe. <laughs> Oh man, I I fucked him up, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, at, right at the very end, after the show, because I was everything he, you know, he, he purports to be. You know, I was the opposite. You know, uh, like, like the gun enthusiast. You know, and, and I asked Joe on the show. I said, Joe, okay, tell me what you got that's worth a human life. What do you own? Your car? What? What? You know. Uh, what, what, show me what do you got that's worth killing someone for you know <laughs> and he was like stunned you know he, he couldn't say anything after the show he showed me around and he showed me his gym and I said oh nice gym Joe do you get a chance to work out here at all and, uh, and <laughs> it was it was what bodybuilders tell other bodybuilders all the time you know you, you see, hey, how are you doing? Oh, you look, have you been sick? <laughs> you lost weight? You know? <laughs> I say that to my brother all the time because he's, you know, he works yeah, out all the yeah, time. Yeah, it's, it's, like, Yo, it's you're a sick, you look like you lost some well, weight. Here, here's, what, here's what Joe Rogan said. He says, <clears throat> was that supposed to be funny? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you had a nerve. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really, I, and that's Joe. That's Joe. He's, he's looking for answers. The fucker doesn't know. <laughs> he thinks he knows. Well, you, you know, know he's, like a, he's like a Trumpy in disguise or something. <laughs> you, know, you, you mentioned before, and, um, you know, I thought that was actually a really good uh, thing that you mentioned. You said something about his car, you know, is, is that worth, you know, taking a life over this and that, and like your gym set. You know, I think that is, uh, I don't want to say psyop, but I think that is the whole. One of the whole problems is thinking that all this materialistic bullshit around us is actually worth that at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is buying they, into they, they, loving they, they think materialistic that, you shit. You know, the boat and everything else is who they are. Yes, <laughs> right. That's a boat. <laughs> You're a guy. You're still the same guy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you still look the same. You still act the same. <laughs> you know. You still sound the same. You still. Smell the same. <laughs> that you know? that big boat and that fancy car didn't make your small dick any bigger today. You know what no, I'm saying? <laughs> no, 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 no. It doesn't, and and that's why that's why I'm popular with a, a lot of the Trumpies in the in the in the millionaire games. You know, because I'm famous, and 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 I'm famous for a beautiful reason. You know, so when people see me. I mean, I, I, like lately, I've been. I think it's because of TikTok, and I'm, you know, I'm on TikTok with my gorgeous wife, because I'm nice. getting all these gorgeous women say, "Oh, will you take a picture with me, please? I love you." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, "Oh, yeah, okay, come on, <laughs> Get over here." <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of the whole Rogan that you were just talking about, what are your thoughts on the stuff that's going on as far as like the censorship that they're. That's uh, going on. Oh, oh, no, no. I mean, I, it, it, you know, these nice people on both sides. There's nice people on both sides. That's true, you know. What it is, <laughs> see, what sign, oh, the truth will set you free. And you can recognize the truth because the truth will also make you laugh. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you ever notice that? You ever notice that? You know what's funny? I had always thought that that, uh, I don't know if you would even, you know this be totally over your head, but uh, Alistair Crowley always had that leaping laughter, and I think he had like even a book or something on that. And I had always thought that maybe something like he was getting across that too. It was like you know sometimes when maybe you do hear the truth, you can kind of laugh it off, you know. Kind of the you, truth yeah. will make you. If you're a comedian like myself, <laughs> like when Cosby went to jail, you know, I really I. I I didn't feel sorry for him at all. I don't feel sorry for anybody going to jail if you're famous, you know, because you get treated better in jail than, than you do. That's why these guys are committing these hor horrendous crimes, you know. It's not about money, not about greed, or not. It's about getting out of the cold and getting into a warm place where you got a, a bed. 
and I'm laughing so hard. You got a track to run on, and you got weights to deal with, and you got a job if you want one, and you can read a book or you do anything. That's jail. <laughs> That's what everybody's, you know, when they're trying to get these prisoners out of jail, been in there, you know. It's not like the jail of, of your grandfather, as they always say. No, this is modern jail. Modern jails have got television, they got computers, emails, they got yes. cell phones, they got everything. <laughs> You're right. They right. have electronic Studio. cigarettes. You're too. right. They do have cell phones in there. <laughs> they're expensive, yeah. but they're there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They got everything. I was in, the, in in prison with Jordan Belford, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street. And uh, he, when he wasn't playing tennis, he was, like, dealing, you know, uh, writing his book and, uh, you know, just doing his business <laughs> like he always does. Too. You know who, no, uh, it, you know George Young, George, uh, the guy from uh, Blow? The guy, uh, that movie Blow that... Um yeah, I know Johnny Depp uh, co covered. It was of that guy George uh, Young, I think his name was. Or yeah, George Young. He was like, he was like oh, he was that cocaine. guy who was like, yeah, cocaine guy was bringing tons of it over here. He was like, oh, right, right. right yeah, right. I was, I was, I was in jail with him. Oh, you were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I was bugged out. I was. Yeah. Everybody's like, yo, you know who that is? I was like, no. They're like, yo, that's a dude from Blow. I was like, yo, what the yeah. fuck? I thought he got, yeah. didn't he get released not long ago? Yes, yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. He's yeah. Out now. Where did you do your time? Oh, I did it in uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey, a federal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, did you have a sweat lodge? You know, they did have one there if you were uh, if you were able to prove a Native American descendants, yes. Oh, they, yeah, they yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, because I'm famous, all of a sudden I'm Native American, so <laughs> I, I, did the, <laughs> I did the sweat lodge. That was the best thing there. Nice. Oh, it was incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they even gave you tobacco too. You're actually able to smoke if you for for, for your well, religious things. Yeah, it's they their, gave you it's tobacco their, to use. Uh, <laughs> yeah, their holy sa sacrament. Yeah, it's yeah. The right. tobacco. Yeah, the pipe is the church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know yeah, what? That's, that's, I wanted to ask you. To, I guess just to get back. I guess maybe more on the spirituality again. Sure. Um, when you like you even mentioned like you know you understand like you're famous people know who you are you have fame you know people look at you as being important but did, going through all that did you find it sometimes harder to maybe that you had to check your ego a lot more like like was there was there a lot of growing pains within yourself you, you, during that fame? no when, when you become a, a comedian you know uh, I was going to say actor, but it's more a comedian. A actors, no, actors are like empty vessels. You know, <laughs> oh, um, when they're not when, when they're not when they're not working. You know, right. they're, that's why they don't have an opinion or anything because they haven't read the script yet. You know, oh, wow. uh, that's I, a really uh, interesting way to put it. <laughs> yeah, uh, what was the question? I forget now. About like well during during your fame during you becoming you know famous get you know getting oh you know, oh, oh did oh, you the find fame. it harder to keep your ego in check? No, it's not hard. <laughs> no, not if you're a bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> you're not hard. You always know where you're at when you're pushing lifting weights. <laughs> there's no you know, there's never a doubt in your mind, and you know you know exactly how much you can lift and. Uh, and yeah, you when you when you're on a healthy, you know, a, a road, you, you know exactly where you're at and what you have to do. Mm, see, gotcha. see, exercise. Well, you know your boundaries that, as that, well that, too. That, that that's really what saved me was that uh, when I started bodybuilding. Uh, all of a sudden, you become honest. You know, <laughs> you you can't help it. You got to be honest about your weight, about how you look, what you can do. You know what you can't do, and uh, mm -hmm. whether you know, and what you should put in your body, all that. See, and then what happened to me? I was, because I'm a musician, I got hung. I got into the jazz, uh, and they were the ones that that got me on the spiritual path. It was a uh, Sonny Greenwich is his name from uh, Montreal, a guitar player, and he turned me on to a book called uh, The Third Eye. Huh. And the third eye is a uh, is a book about a, a Tibetan uh, reincarnated uh, uh, Tibetan, and he got reincarnated as an Englishman, but uh, he he 
knew that he was, a, you know, he, he's from the t- Tibetan thing. And anyway, he wrote a book called The Third Eye, which explains uh, who we are, what we are, why we're here, uh, and what's in the future. And then f- w- when I got turned on to that book, when, when, when you get your heading in that direction then these the the you know when the when the pupil's ready the teacher appears Mm -hmm. Uh and and that's what happened as soon as i started going down that road boom all these uh, and then books by uh goldsmith Uh, let me tell you this story this this is very very freaky uh for for Perfect for this show. Oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm walking. I'm walking down New York, going to the gym, 42nd gym, very famous gym. And all of a sudden, I felt like somebody turned me, like turned my whole body, and and pushed me toward this store. And it was a publishing house, Harper Collins Publishing House. Mm. And I went in the door, and I was. It was like, who's pushing me? You know. Mm. I, you know, I didn't. I had no idea. I'm going to the gym. All of a sudden, I'm pushed into the into this publishing store, and I'm taken over to this book rack, and I felt my arm something like take my arm and put it down, and I and I pick up the autobiography of Joel S. Goldsmith, and he's a mystic from New York. He was uh, Goldsmith. He's Jewish yeah, figures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Goldsmith, Joel S. Goldsmith. He's online. You can get his books yeah. and everything else. It changed my life. It changed my life. And uh, you, you'll have to read it, and you'll see why. It'll it'll change your life, too. It'll change everybody's life. Joel was, a, 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 a like I said, he was Jewish from New York. And uh, just, a, just a short summary of his life. <clears throat> he... Uh, he was looking for, for something. He wasn't sure what it was. And he en- eventually ended up uh, joining the Christian Scientist, uh, which was a Christian group. And, and he became a reader. And then he learned how to heal people. And, in fact, is the first person he healed was his father. His father, he got a telegram. This is back, in, you know, before airplanes. And, and he's back uh, telling uh, uh he got a telegram from his father was dying, and he was in England. And the Christian scientists told him, you know, he doesn't have to die. You can heal him. And so uh, they told him how to do it. And uh, and short, long story short, he ends up he he gets gets on a boat to uh, to England, and and there's his father at the dock waving at him, and his father lived for, for a few more years. So Joel became a healer. And, and then he started giving lectures because uh, in, in, uh, in Los Angeles, about 19, I think in the 60s, no, 50s, in the 50s. And he started giving these lectures at the Wilton Theater about who we are and why we're here and what we should be doing while we're here and, and how to make our life better. Nice. And uh, the spiritual secrets. And I read that book, and then in the book he talks about Emmett Fox, and so I right away got got a hold of Emmett Fox, and I read Emmett Fox, and it uh, those books themselves I still read them every day, uh, you know, every once in a while. And the way I do it now, uh, like I got the I Ching too, which I got in prison, but the way I do it now is that when I feel like I need to know an answer, I'll go over and I'll just pick up either either one of the books and just sum it and then just open it randomly and then I read the message. And, uh, and it's, it's always right. Wow. <laughs> there's, there's never been a wrong message. That's incredible. It's like we wow. talk about it on the podcast all the time, the law of like attraction, you know, what you yeah. think. Or when those floodgates open, then you start to see things come towards you as though, you know, like you said, that once you're ready, then the master comes. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful yeah, it's the way it to works. see that happen. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's in the scripture, you know, ask and you shall receive. Yeah. You know yes. how, I, how I like, how I like, uh, you know, I'm sure I, you know who David Lynch is, I would assume. Uh, the mood maker? Yeah. Twin Peaks. Yeah. 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 He yeah, makes, yeah, makes yeah, all yeah, that yeah. weird, makes all that weird shit. He, he always says, uh, 
you know, uh, when you, you he's big into trans, transcendental meditation, and he he talks yeah. about quieting yeah. the mind and getting to that yeah. spot of oneness. And he even says himself, uh, when you get to that point, when you're ready to hear the teacher, you will be given like these little golden nuggets or these little golden eggs of ideas and inspiration. And yeah. I, I think that's kind of like what you're saying right here. You know, when you tune well, yeah. in, you 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 get you were to, you're, you you hear what what you're meant to hear. Finally, right. yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and whatever, whatever you need is is given to you, and, and the reason is is that, see, in the spiritual world, see, in the physical world, you, you have to have opposites. You know, it's electricity. You have to have positive <laughs> and negative. We always talk about. That. It's funny how you mention electricity because we talk about yeah, that a positive lot. Positive and negative. That's, <laughs> with, 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 with spirituality, that's, and that's really that's really what we are. Now, when you look at it, opposites, up, you have to have down, uh, you know, and, and th we have gravity, so we know where down is, <laughs> you know. Uh, there has to be opposites. So when I asked Siri, uh, you know, how big is our universe? And uh, Siri said, it's finite, it, it's there. You, there's no end to to the universe. That's the physical world. That's the physical world. So the opposite of everything is nothing. Yeah. So the spiritual world exists in a little place called nothing, because there's no want, need, or desire in the spiritual world. There is only love. <laughs> only love. My man. Now. Yeah. Now. So a spirit is invisible. There's, it doesn't weigh. There's no sub substance or anything. So basically what a spirit is, you're with me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, a, yeah. a thought. Mm. That's what a spirit is, a thought. That's why you can have evil spirits, which are evil thoughts. That's See, what I God attribute is, to demons. God is, only, listen, God is only a thought away. Yeah, uh, no, I understand transcendental meditation. I understand, you know, yeah. uh, teach teach is a big proponent of meditation and that. Uh, but that's one way to go. But I would rather myself would rather be doing other things other than being quiet and and forcing my mind uh, to be quiet. I can do that with a thought, and I can I, and I can have God with me all the time. Because I'm thinking of God all the time. I'm surrounded by books that, that talk about God. Uh, I'm surrounded by art, which is God made visible. I'm, I, I'm, I'm watching TV again. Uh, 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 more gifts. More gifts yeah. from the Creator. So, so, so when you think, that's who you are. So if you're thinking bad thoughts, what's the best remedy? Change your mind. And that's why the problems that we have with the homeless really are mental problems. Mm, yeah. You know, whether they're violent or passive or whatever, or if it's substance abuse or whatever it is, but it's all mental problems. Yeah. Their, 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 their thinking is, is yeah. I guess, again, I almost went into my judge not thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did almost, you ever almost, have you ever I read um, have you ever read a book called out. In Search of the Miraculous? No. Oh, yeah. you would absolutely love it. It's by a, a man named Grichev. He was an Indian mystic, and oh, yeah. uh, he is just. It, it's called In Search of the Miraculous, and everything that you're yeah. talking about here, he covers in the yeah. book. And if you enjoy that yeah. type of stuff, you would find it fascinating. Oh. He was brilliant, brilliant man. That type of stuff is what. Uh, propels me. See, jazz music is is of God, without doubt, because music is eternal. Music is always there's always been music, always been the same note, <laughs> C G E F. There always been that forever and ever and ever and always will be. Mm -hmm. And so when you hit music and harmony, by the way, there's good and bad music, you know. Good and evil, <laughs> you know, nice people on both sides. Polarity. The, there's the, you know, look at the music, the music. Well, well, look at the the, the two Woodstocks. The the first Woodstock 
was peace, love, and God. You know, don't. Same thing. Okay. The 19, I think, 99 Woodstock had the punk rockers and the, and the hate and the, and the rappers and they're like, and the devil worshipers, you know, those kind of guys. For the and, and it was a mess. It was horrible. Whereas the uh, the first one was went nice. Everything else was great. The 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 the, the opposite one <laughs> again opposites was was the opposite in in every way. So so we got we and then we live in those in those two extremes. And yes. it's how we. It's yeah. what we need to do with our life and what our karma says. There again. See, I can talk to you, but uh, because you asked me, but you know, if I start going down this road on a lot of shows, boom, they, they stop it right away, oh, and no, rightly no. so. No, not, not here, because they're not re- they're not ready. <laughs> not here, not here. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome to say whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. the the thought of what you were, you know, you're. Um, for myself, at least, uh, growing up, I would know that I would live a lot of my life in this kind of unconscious way, just letting yeah. everything else around me, you know, uh, affect what I would do through the day. And then later in life, you know, I started to do the practice where I would sit down and try and recall everything that I could at the end of the day. That way it was a way for me to sort of monitor my thoughts. I'd like, am I being conscious during my day- daily life? Do I even remember Love what it. I did 20 minutes ago? So Love it's, it. it's a, yeah. something I still try to do. It's such a battle every day, though, because it's like you, your mind always wants to slip into the into the subconscious, not mm-hmm. caring, not conscious mode. You know, ask God when you start doing that. Say, okay, God, help me, and watch what happens. Mm. If you lose your, when I lose my phone, I don't look for it, and then ask God. I ask God first. <laughs> you know, most people they use God as the last resort. Oh, yeah, yeah. God, you, know, you know, you know what's funny, and, I, 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 and I'll come out. And you, you, you have no idea about about us at all, or, or anything, probably, when yeah. it comes to this. But I mean, I used to be a member of the OTO, the Ordo Templi Orientis. I did the whole spiel. I had the whole get up, the altar, all this stuff. I'm doing all these rituals. I'm doing all this stuff to try to change my life. And honestly, when I had the most profound spiritual experiences that wasn't considered magic with a K, that I think, you know, I still had a profound spiritual experience, is when I had none of that shit, and I was just completely honest, (laughs) and I said to God, I'm fucked up, can you please help me, I don't know what the fuck to do. And in those moments, when I didn't need all that bling bling around me, thinking that this God or this entity is going to help me, when I just called God myself, I got the fucking answer I needed. You do. You do. It's that simple. Yeah. It's that simple. Because that, that it's like our computer, uh, our phone. You know, I just learned how to do Siri the other day because I was kind of afraid, you know, and lazy. You know, just lazy. Uh, you know, I got kids. Hey, come here, help me. You know, do this for me. Do that for me. You know. But the other day, I learned how to do Siri, and so I've been having a lot of fun with Siri, <laughs> you know, asking, <laughs> asking a lot of questions. And I love Siri because she's so honest. She goes, like, she doesn't know. She, I don't know. <laughs> you'll, have to, you'll have to ask Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe she's, maybe she's got. It. <laughs> That's so yeah. funny. Now, I know there was something uh, I think we also wanted to touch on. Lux wanted to ask you a question. I know we're stuck with a certain amount of time. So, Lux, did you want to bring up the thing with, um, I think, the treatment, right? Right. I, I was curious about, I know that you had um, that you had been diagnosed with cancer and that, you know, uh, much of your, your sort of healing process was holistic, right? Uh, in, in, in a... In a, in a yeah, after I did the, the with the doctor, you know, uh, I had people, you know, right away wanted me to, you know, oh, don't don't do radiation, don't do this, don't do that, you know, just do let weed, you know. But my my son, thank God, my son, you know, told them all to fuck off. Uh, I, um, yeah, again, you know, 
I went to God. I had a friend that had cancer, and he told me what to do when you, you're being radiated and all that stuff. You know, put on headphones and listen to music. And so, so I did that. But uh, in the beginning, you know, I got the cancer because I uh, was I never smoked weed for for almost three years because I was in you know pre pre trial probation, which they <laughs> drug tested me. Yeah. Uh, then I was in in jail. In which they also tested me all the time, and and uh, a year of probation, which they always tested me, and, <laughs> and and it was no problem because I made up my mind that I was not going to violate anything. You know, I I can stay within the rules. You know, I've always done it all my life. I can do it now, and and so so I I never stopped smoking. But I think that opened the door for me to get prostate cancer which happens to guys my age anyway. And so then I made the mistake of getting a biopsy and the, and the cancer spread to my rectum. Oh. And so as a result, I had to have my rectum removed and the, the exit moved around to the front. And now I have what you call a colostomy bag. And all, all that time, man, <laughs> being a comedian, man, I was... And almost in stitches laughing at all the shit that was going down, you know, because uh, I knew I was going to be okay. First of all, I'm not worried uh, anything about thy will be done. You know, if it was my turn to go, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not <laughs> really in, right. you know. No, no, I hear what uh, you're saying, yeah. But but if it's not, and I know it's not my turn to go because I couldn't be that lucky. You know? yeah. uh, <laughs> so no, I have to. You got to stay here a little shit. bit longer. I got to stay here and finish the shit I started. You know, <laughs> so I was having so much fun. First of all, I got to try all those drugs that everybody warns you about. You know, the oxycotton and all the heroin, heroin type drugs and everything else. And I didn't get hooked on them at all because uh, the minute I got off the drugs, by the way, I enjoyed them. Uh, they ha had me hooked up with a button. And every time I hit that button, you know, it would make a sound. And you could hear the ding, ding, ding. You know? I wanted my money's worth, man. And, and I got it, man. I, and it just made me funny. I, I woke up out of the, out of the operation room. And my daughter's walking beside me, you know, as he wheeled me from the, the thing. And I looked at her and I said, oh, my God, you look exactly like my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she goes, Dad, I am your daughter. And I said, no, really, you do look. <laughs> I thought she was a nurse. <laughs> and, and then I was teaching all the doctors, uh, the prost pro proctologist handshake, <laughs> which ends up being the uh, the the uh, pandemic handshake with the elbow, you know. And I, and I just had, I had the, the, the best time. And then when it comes to time to get off the, the, the good drugs, you know, the, the make you high drugs, I got right into injecting CBD. And, and then I started smoking again, uh, but not, not a whole lot, you know. Uh, I, I did gummies. But I, I made sure I got the THC in, in me, but it was the CBD injections that I was, within days I was up and around, no problem, you know, none, oh, really? no problem whatsoever. Wow. And, then, and then everything healed perfectly and uh, everything was great and, and been that way ever since. You know? Wow. So it sounds like it really did. Make yeah, effect. the CBD, I'm selling it now. <laughs> you know, we got... Uh, uh, it's like uh, what is it? It was Alice in Wonderland. We got some CBD to bring you up, <laughs> and then we got and we got CBD to bring you down. <laughs> yeah, no, the up is it's uh, it's a CBD mixture. It's got a little bit of something in there that's healthy for you anyway. And and what it does, it just kind of gives you energy. And then I got the one. Who, I don't. I don't like to do it because I, I will. And, and I don't sleep anymore. I, I, you know, being an old guy, <clears throat> you know, the tendency is to to recharge the batteries. But instead of sleeping, that's when I I use that time to work out. I, I use uh, 
rubber bands now. I, I don't use the heavy weights, yeah. although I could still do uh, deadlifts if I wanted. But I, I used rubber bands, and, and and I have a great time. And I invent, I invented a, a an exercise machine that will probably, when I finish it, will probably make me richer than the weed, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> I'm serious, I'm serious. No, that's good I too. invented, I invented um, perpetual motion machine, an exercise machine. And what it is, it's a, a frame with a, a skateboard strung on four springs. And you stand on the skateboard like you're skateboarding or surfing or skiing. I, I invented it for skiing because uh, there's there's nothing in the gym to help you w to learn how to do moguls, you know, where your legs act like springs, you know, they're, they're bouncing so hard. Yeah. And there's no, there's no exercise. Jump squats a little bit, but this one, because you have to have that, that body stiff on the top and, and just your legs moving and so I, I, I invented that about 20 years ago and uh, I've been using it ever since it's the best workout for old guys because you use gravity and your body weight you see and then you just like like on a diving board you know you can work your calves you can do as many jumps as you want without people getting pissed off at you because you never dived. <laughs> <laughs> and and you can do all these exercises and 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 now I'm gonna I'm in the process of hooking it up to a, a TV screen so you could really go down a, a mountain and ski and, and blah 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 you know almost like the bike rider uh, with a with a chick talking so I, so so I you know. It, uh, God and weed and uh, you know and asking you know it, it all works it, it, it's and it's the simplest thing it's yeah. so simple well, that's but I keep learning I keep learning things man I keep learning. judge not that all oh, that oh and this one lose your anger oh for real you do not need anger Ever, ever lose your anger. Think about that one. You're in traffic. Now some some cut you off or something. Now you, you you get mad, and your body goes through all sorts of changes mm. when you do that. Yeah, you get red in the face, all that stuff. That's circulation. Your body's getting your old. whole body gets re, gets is is yeah. is, is is reacting yeah. to a thought. Yeah, and your judgment is all wrong. Everything's wrong from anger. That's why, like, when they play football or in their boxer and that, the last thing they want to do is get mad, get angry, you know, because then you lose your shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, that. so, so that's that that that, and that's what I'm saying. Old, you know, I, I'm I'll be 84 my next birthday. Oh, and I'm wow. still learning shit, man. I'm still, every day I wake up, oh, yeah, that's right. We can do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, when, when you have God you know, on your mind, we you become a beholder. All of a sudden, you see art wherever you look. Yes. In fact, I wrote, yeah. I wrote a poem. I wrote a poem that says, look around and you will see the reflections of your mind. Mm. If you look with love and an open heart, love is all that you will find. Isn't that nice? I can actually, yeah, wow. That's pretty serious, yeah. actually. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> all right. <laughs> one, of, one of my favorite ones, uh, you were just talking about Bible verses, is I think what's the conversation with Jesus, and they ask him, you know, where can, how can we get to the kingdom of, of heaven? And then he he says, wait, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And that verse always is stuck with me, and I thought that uh, just be inspiration. Isn't that something? Isn't yeah. that something? Yeah. yeah. He also said that you must be like little children. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you know what? And oh, you, no, know, and you know why I think that's a good one? Going back to your no judging, I think as children, we look at things just as they are, 
and not file it into something and give it a label yeah. and judge. You're totally right. Yeah. Totally right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, judging judging limits limits. Yes. That's why yeah. that's why you have racism. You know, that's why you have people. You know, they look at people. They look at your your. Judged by your dress, or by your clothes, or by your hair, or by your color, your skin. You know, right away they, they judge instead of admiring. You see, uh, see if you look at the other way, say, oh man, that's beautiful. Like my my. Uh, we need more inspiration uh, instead of more judging. <laughs> you know. Well, that's all. The kingdom lies within. Yeah. That, that's what we need. See, everything we need is available to us, you know. That's the other thing that the 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 uh, lockdown, this uh, thing, it was a big teaching moment, you know. Mm. People learned that they don't have to go to department stores and stand in line and all that stuff. You can look at a book <laughs> uh, and pick out what you need, you know, a magazine and pick out what you need and have it delivered. <laughs> and if it's wrong, you can just take it back and change it or whatever, you know. Our life, and, and there again, it's God inspired, you know, this pandemic. It was, you know what, what killed me about the pandemic? When it first hit, I just finished a movie called uh, The Color Out of Space. And it was about a pandemic that came on a meteorite and it affected the whole world. <laughs> and then wow. a couple of months later, the pandemic hit. And I thought, mm. oh, shit. Oh no! <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> was that yeah. part of that? Yeah. <laughs> was that part of that? I, I didn't mean to. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <laughs> well, you. Uh, I think we got about like what two and a half minutes left with you. It's about two minutes. Um. Uh. Or uh, is there anything that you would like to leave us with? Do you want to plug any of your stuff? Did you like let anybody well, you know, know your CBD the, the oil? Cheech and, Cheech and Chong uh, takeout is is starting up everywhere. We're going to go uh, public with with uh, the, the stock uh, very soon. Um, these are all, uh, you know, we're the, the takeout. Every once in a while, Cheech and I will show up at your house. <laughs> you never know, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, <laughs> And we'll show up and we'll invite ourselves in and hope you got some good wine or something uh, for Cheech. I don't know, you know. Uh, and don't have to worry about the dope because we're bringing that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we're going to have fun. We're, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, and and the, I also, I got a couple of big plans because, you know, I, I put it out there in the universe. I want to become the richest man in America, well, actually the world. I, I want to become the <laughs> richest man in the world now. And it can be done, you know, just with selling my weed, you know. Uh, and uh, are we there? Yeah, yeah. Did yeah, I get yeah. cut off? Yeah. Uh, and, and when I become the richest man, uh, you won't be seeing me going into space for six minutes. You won't <laughs> see me buying a big yacht that, that, I can't wait to get rid of, uh, <laughs> you know, what you're going to see is a, is a guy that is so happy. <laughs> you can't stop smiling because what you, you know what you do with money ever play monopoly in the beginning of the game, everybody gets money. Okay. At the end of the game, usually one person ends up with all the money. Well, what I want to do, I want to see a world where everybody in America, just America. Let's, like, let, let's keep it in America, where er, because everybody will copy it if it works, works, and it will work. But we can, uh, we can make this paradise on Earth, and and you know how we do it. You see what Trump did. He he wrote a movie for the insurrection, and then he had all these these uh, followers help him write the movie. It wasn't a reality show, you know. This this couldn't happen. If he had a lawyer that would tell him the truth, it would never have happened. So he wrote a movie, and everybody was like a, an extra or a, a player in the movie. Mm -hmm. They 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 filmed themselves. <laughs> so so they think they should go 
on the record as well. Hey, Your Honor, yeah, I know I killed it, but hey, I filmed it. Look at the footage. Look at the footage. You know, you wouldn't have had that if I hadn't have filmed it. You know, it's that kind of mindset. You know, so so what, what what's going on in the world now? When you're enlightened, it's such a beautiful place, such a beautiful show. Why? Spoiler alert! I know the I know the eventual outcome. See, like like everything, this too shall pass. The good, the bad, the ugly. It's only here for a little while. Enjoy, enjoy everything. Enjoy every moment. There's no reason not to. Like when I went to jail, I went to jail as a, as a writer. You know, I was embedded with the troops because I wanted to remember everything. You know, and, and I wanted to be, I wanted to feel what it was like to do time in jail. In fact, I I asked a guy that had been there in jail uh, most of his life. You know, in and out. His name was Steve. I met him because uh, I was practicing my tango on the basketball court by myself and of course it attracted a lot of bikers and and guys to you know what the hell is he doing kind of thing and, and uh, i met uh, this one biker goes hey john you don't have to dance alone here i'll dance with you <laughs> so i went over right over to him well, missing a beat and i took him in my arms and i started dancing with him like he's a girl <laughs> he freaked out he got all homophobic and oh jesus well, he became my best buddy, my, my dog, and he taught me how to do time. And there, there's a way to do time. And the oh, first yeah, thing you, you learn, you know how you do time? The first thing you do is uh, play games. You get in, involved in a game, a card game, a checker game, uh, any kind of game. And that, 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 that's how you do time. You get in games and read books. That's how you do time. Hmm. It's incredible. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on. And I mean, this is yeah, just, just wild to even say I had a conversation any, any, with Tommy. Any time, guys. Yeah, I would. You know, I would really you want, like. You want to talk spirituality? Uh, I, I'm your man. Yeah, you I actually you said a hell of a lot more than I had expected you to say. You really. Uh, <laughs> You left you le you no you really you left me with some jewels and some gems to think about and I appreciate that and uh, I would definitely love check to out, have you back on again. Check out those check out those books. Check yeah, out no, uh, I definitely Goldsmith will. and Emmett Fox. They will. I'm telling you, they will change. They're they're not not only easy read, but when you when you it's like when you discover the map to Disneyland. You know, and you know exactly <laughs> where to go, and you know what rides to go on. Everything. That's what a Bible is. Nice. You said you said yeah. the guy's name was Gold Goldsmith. Goldsmith. Yeah. Yes. Joel S. Goldsmith. Okay. And Emmett Fox. E M M E M M O T T. Yeah, Emmett Fox. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And the other, the first one, if you if you want to get it, it's it's a kind of a paperback. It's it's great, great reading. I mean, it tells you a lot of stuff that I didn't know. It was a third eye. By T. Lobsang Rampa. T. Lobsang Rampa. Definitely. It's a, it's a, read them, read them, and then Thank you know you. what? Yeah. Read them, and then let, let, have me on the show again. Because oh, I, yo, I, all I, right, we'll yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll talk yeah. shit about the books. That sounds that sounds like a plan. That, sounds like a okay, plan. kids. That's your homework for today. And I'll, see, I'll, see you in, I'll see you for the next lesson. Okay? Tom, uh, thank you again. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, I'm going to put some of your links if I can find your stuff, your oils or whatever. If you sell it online, I'll put it inside the show notes. The show, all online. Yeah, the show notes yep. for uh, my show will be in there, Tommy's stuff, and all the other places that you can see the occult rejects. And uh, again, it. thank you so much, Tommy Chong. I had really an amazing time, and we will definitely talk again. Uh, okay. Take and care. that's bye -bye. it. Later. See you.